So here in this forest, I'm studying how forest fragmentation affects carbon storage and biodiversity. So I look at different sizes of forest fragments, so small patches of forest, large patches of forest, and how well connected they are to other forests in the region. So whether they're very isolated or they're very close to other large tracts of forest. And with our compass, we just shoot a line in the direction that we Carbon want. storage is the way by which we measure climate regulation, which is an ecosystem service. It's a regulating service. And so trees, through photosynthesis, take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and turn them into biomass, so into wood, where they're stored as carbon. So the reason that this is important is that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a major contributor to climate change and to global warming. So the more carbon that we have stored in biomass in the forests, the less carbon dioxide we have in the atmosphere contributing to climate change. So to measure carbon storage, it's actually quite simple. You take the diameter at breast height of a tree. So at 1.3 meters above the ground, you use a special tape called a diameter tape, and you circle the tree and measure that. And from there, you can use an equation that's specific to each tree species to determine how much carbon is actually stored in that particular tree. I am also looking at biodiversity. So we're focusing on, on tree biodiversity. So the reason that we're looking at this is that conservationists or ecologists are always searching for these win-win scenarios. So we want regions to have high biodiversity, but also store high amounts of carbon. And we're interested in whether those coincide, whether that occurs in the same space. But we don't know a lot about what that relationship is. So by measuring both the biodiversity and the carbon storage present, we can see whether there's a correlation there. So fragmentation is a huge issue in forest today because what used to be these continuous tracts of forest are increasingly being you know, cut and split up into smaller and smaller pieces. And there's an idea that if you can connect these forest fragments back together through something like a corridor network or a green belt, then that can help you preserve biodiversity, preserve ecosystem services. But we don't really know how that affects things like carbon storage, things like regulating services. So what I'm interested in is whether these different types of forest fragments act differently in how they store carbon and whether or not building a network or building a corridor between fragments can help us to improve or preserve carbon storage. So implications of this type of research for things like city planning or agriculture are that it can help us to decide which types of forests are most important to protect. So it can help us to decide whether it's important to protect these small isolated pieces of forest or whether it's more important that we connect or protect rather larger pieces of forest or more well-connected pieces of forest. Nature and kind of our day-to-day -day life are they're very connected so we think of you know, ecological research and environment as being in these, these pristine places, this wilderness that's far away. But really, you know, here in the Monteregie, there's, there's nature and there's important forests providing these ecosystem services and services to us that are right outside your doorstep. So it's, it's important to know how integrated natural and human systems are.